and we're back at it again with more BPC-157 research to analyze, and although we've discussed it in many different realms, ranging from wound healing to gastrointestinal recovery to all the studies involving rat Achilles tendons, today we're going to take a closer look at the brain, in particular with regards to the central nervous system and its injury. Think traumatic brain injuries and strokes, that's our focus today. But before we dive into our intricate neurochemistry, just hit that like and subscribe button if you like this type of content. It's the best way to support a small peptide YouTuber like me who, as a profound hobby, enjoys actually reading this stuff. I'll highlight that if you do want to see videos on all these other topics, make sure to search BPC-157 on the channel page and you'll find like 15 videos covering this peptide alone amongst many others out there. And just like BPC-157 exhibits thought-provoking research in other facets, history seems to repeat itself once again with regards to the CNS, or Central Nervous System, which comprises the brain and the spinal cord. And thankfully, we've got quite a bit to discuss, so I hope you're down for a bit of a conversation. Grab your coffee, evening cocktail, or glass of ice-cold water, and let's go through this together. I know my regular viewers know about BPC's structure and derivation, but for the newer people watching this video, let's do a quick recap. It's a 15-amino acid peptide, hence why it's called a pentadecapeptide, derived endogenously from our own gastric acid, which therein lies its predominant evaluation in the context of gastrointestinal injury. And although studied mostly in rodents, the findings are so interesting, hence why I'm fascinated by the data and have made like a million videos on it. And that's why you'll see it's oftentimes referenced alongside the brain-gut axis, the relationship between the intricate microbiome of the gut and the brain. So there's been some interesting rat studies where researchers essentially provoked injury to the spinal cord. And of note, compression of the spinal cord alone can cause severe lasting damage, just like moments worth of ischemia to the heart can cause severe lifelong trauma. And it's been noticed when tail paralysis is induced in rodents via compression of the lower spinal cord. BPC-157 administration significantly improves recovery time and if given shortly after the injury, quickly reverses the effects while those untreated exhibited lasting damage for upwards of a year. Also, injury to the spinal cord can lead to hemorrhage and as a result, death of the neurons, or these cells that make up the nervous system. And interestingly, when researchers simulated spinal cord contusion in rats, they noticed that BPC-induced healing is not just mediated by hemostasis or stopping of blood flow, but it also enhances function of thrombocytes and in one way or another affects clotting factors. And BPC-157 seems to have an impact on endothelial function as well through promoting formation of alternative pathways for blood to flow and counteracting vein occlusions. It's also been shown to improve sciatic nerve recovery after transection. And also, when rodent carotid arteries are clamped, i.e. creating a stroke given subsequent brain ischemia, when given during re perfusion periods, it not only exhibits reparative properties towards neurons, but it also helps to enhance functional recovery. And when mice were subjected to a ridiculous brain injury by essentially dropping weights on them, and they were prophylactically given BPC-157 at different time frames before the incident, the ones administered the peptide 30 minutes before the injury showed the most improved recovery metrics when compared to their counterparts from lower intensity brain bleeding to less intense swelling around the brain. And the peptide is shown to possess diverse neuroprotective effects in the setting of provoked overdoses of different compounds. It's theorized to be antidotal to the deleterious hypoglycemic effects of insulin overdose, NSAID or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug-induced toxicity, and even with regards to a toxic agent called cuprazone that induces brain demyelination and essentially simulates multiple sclerosis, where after its application, BPC-157 seems to counteract some of the encephalopathic changes and resultant muscle disability. As you can see, the research is quite fascinating. A lot of it's been conducted by the same scientists who obviously possess a strong interest in the peptide, but it's beyond intriguing nonetheless, and obviously unlike most compounds out there. Is it translational to humans? Who knows? And until pharmaceutical money runs with the compound, I don't think we'll know for sure. And although a lot of the possible benefits are clear and yes, lack proper scientific elucidation, we aren't quite so sure about their long-term risks. Regardless, I hope you found this as interesting as I did and it didn't, you know, put you to sleep. In which case, apparently BPC-157 research could be utilized even as a sleep aid. So if that is the case, watch this video before bed. All dumb jokes aside, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, hit that like button, subscribe button, and I hope you have a great day.